Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to look at another recent DNA breakthrough in a decades old murder case of a woman named Robin Lawrence. Her killer, who was finally caught recently thanks to advancements in DNA technology, specifically genetic genealogy, which not only solved Robin's case, but also generated a picture of what her killer would look like, which turned out to also help police track down her murderer. We'll also look at the very encouraging trend of murder cases that were unsolved for decades now being solved recently thanks to genetic genealogy. Now DNA has been solving cases for years, but seems to me like with the emergence of genetic genealogy, we've seen an amazing increase in killers getting caught after decades of having gotten away with their crimes. Now in 1994, Robin Lawrence was at home with her two-year-old baby girl in Springfield, Virginia. Robin's husband, Ollie, was an executive with an airline and he was working overseas at the time. Ollie had become concerned when Robin wasn't picking up the phone when he'd call. So he asked a family friend to go by the house and check on her. That friend made a gruesome discovery of Robin having been stabbed to death. Robin and Ollie's two-year-old daughter was left unharmed in the next room, but their daughter was there for two full days with her dead mother's body, just the two of them alone in the house, until the friend came by to discover Robin's murder. It took until September of 2023 to find Robin's killer, but thanks to advancements in DNA technology, specifically genetic genealogy, police were finally able to identify Robin's killer. In September of 2023, Robin's killer was identified through DNA. Her husband, Ollie, said he was, quote, flabbergasted to hear a suspect had been arrested after decades of no developments in the case. Ollie said, quote, you could have probably knocked me over with a feather. After all this time, you have hope, but you also wonder, will they really find someone after 29 years? Authorities used Parabon Nanolabs, a genetic genealogy company that uses DNA evidence and traditional genealogy to identify potential relatives of suspects whose DNA may not be in genetic databases. The lab also specializes in using unidentified DNA evidence to, quote, predict physical appearance. This is yet one more incredible development in this technology. What this means is, with the use of just DNA, scientists can predict what that person would have looked like. So Parabon Nanolabs was able to render a digital composite sketch of the suspect which helped lead authorities to Robin's killer. This is the picture that the lab came up with of what Robin's murderer likely looked like in 1994. Again, police don't know which relative is the killer. So what do police do to make sure that they're on the track of the correct smirk relative? They look at Stephen Smirk's yearbook photo. This is the photo that they found. Police then compared Stephen Smirk's driver's license photo. And here's what his photo looked like at the time. So look at this amazing technology. This means that just from your blood or your saliva or your hair, these DNA labs now with their advanced technology can now tell what you looked like or what your killer looked like. So this is amazing technology and amazing advances. So this DNA composite sketch helped police catch Stephen Smirk as Robin Lawrence's murderer. So police had no leads at the time of Robin's murder. They discover a young mother 
brutally murdered in her home. The killer stabbed her multiple times. But Robin had no known enemies. She did not lead a high-risk lifestyle. Her husband is an airline executive. Robin herself worked in the promotions department of Merchants Tire and Auto Centers. They didn't know who would want to brutally murder Robin who didn't have an enemy in the world. So in 2023, the DNA lab identified Stephen Smirk as being Robin's murderer. Now, Stephen Smirk was a middle-aged man married with two children in college. And he was living in Niskayuna, New York, which is in upstate New York. So two detectives from Springfield, Virginia, took a trip up to New York to try to talk to Stephen Smirk. Now, when the police arrived at Smirk's house, he just happened to come outside at the same time. He was taking his trash out. So at that time, detectives had a consensual conversation with Smirk. They also asked him if they could take a DNA swab from his cheeks. He agreed. So don't forget, at this point, they have identified that the DNA came from somebody in Smirk's family. So you have to actually do more investigative work. So, you know, they don't even know for sure if Stephen Smirk is their killer. And that's why they wanted to take a swab of his DNA, take that DNA back to Virginia, get it tested, and then to find out, is this the correct Smirk relative? So, Detectives did find that it was odd that when they had this encounter with Smirk in his driveway when he was taking out his trash, and when they told him that they were investigating a murder from 1994 from Springfield, Virginia, and they wanted to know if they could take his DNA, he said yes, and he never even asked for more details. That struck them as a red flag, but they now have his DNA. They can take it back to Virginia to test it and find out if uh, Stephen Smirk was Robin Lawrence's killer. Or perhaps he's just a relative of the killer. At this point, they don't know. When detectives leave Stephen Smirk's driveway, go back to their hotel, and they're getting ready to get on a plane the next day to fly back to Virginia. But they left him their business card and went on their way. Well, later on that very day, Stephen Smirk called the detectives and he said I want to talk and I want to talk right now so apparently decades of guilt was finally getting to Stephen Smirk all it took to trigger his confession was for detectives to show up on his doorstep after decades and they told him well go to the local police station and we'll meet you there they then call the local police station, who, by the way, have no idea that these Virginia detectives are even in their town in upstate New York. And they say, hey, we're detectives from Springfield, Virginia. We just interrogated a murderer who now is on the way to your police station, and we're going to meet him there to take his confession. So, yeah, crazy detective work, great detective work. Stephen Smirk showed up at the Niskayuna, New York police station, small town in upstate New York. There's only one police station and the two detectives from Virginia met him there and Stephen Smirk admitted that he was the one who murdered Robin Lawrence in 1994 with her two-year-old daughter in the next room. Now this case is a horrific killing of a young mother just feet from her two-year-old daughter who had to sit in the house with her mother's dead body for two days. Now here's some news coverage of the case. Now let's watch and discuss. 51-year-old Stephen Smirk of Niskayuna, New York, is under arrest and charged with the November 20th, 1994 murder of then 37-year-old Robin Lawrence. Uh, we're also here today because of the powerful tool of genetic genealogy analysis. We're, we're, we're honored by the fact that the family has chosen to join us today. Uh, their presence is beyond meaningful, and, and ultimately, uh, we do this for them. We have no reason to believe at the moment that he's suspected in any additional similar crimes, but uh, we, we leave that open to possibility. So I think once news of this hits locally, 
once the news of this uh, hits up uh, in Niska Una, New York, um, we anticipate that we'll get some some phone calls and some information about this person that may lead us to other crimes. But right now, uh, we're not holding anything in our back pocket about other crimes that we particularly suspect him of. It's, you know, beyond involvement, he, he talked about he talked about killing Robin, and he talked uh, a little bit about some some more details that that I, that I won't go into. But it was a full confession. And it was a confession with more than enough details, coupled with the genetic genealogy research, uh, the extraordinary photographs that were up just a few minutes ago. That first sketch is uh, generated by Parabon. That's that's a sketch generated by DNA. Um, you know how far we've come. In this confession, did he give a motive as to why he was there? Yeah, I'm not going to go into the motive, but I can just tell you that there's no relationship whatsoever between the victim and, and the killer. He chose her uh, uh, seemingly randomly, and and it was uh, a heinous, heinous scene. And I've seen a lot of crime scenes in person and photographs of one, and, and this one was uh, was particularly particularly gruesome. I, I'm, I'm unaware. Does, does the Army have any interest in doing like a court martial or prosecution themselves since? He was there. And we, we talked about that a little bit, and it, we certainly have been in contact with, with the Army. Uh, but what, the evidence that we have, the strength of this case, um, is overwhelming. And, and we feel fully comfortable that he's going to be successfully prosecuted right here in Fairfax County. That doesn't mean that we've shut the door on anything that U.S. Army can bring to bear to hold him accountable as well. This is the house where Robin Lawrence was killed in November of 1994, just days before her birthday. She'd been stabbed repeatedly. Her little girl left wandering in the home. Robin's husband, a U.S. Air executive, was out of town and had asked a friend to check on his wife when he couldn't reach her. DNA was gathered at the crime scene, but there was no match. Doggedness is a powerful trait. Our cold case detectives have that trait in spades. That doggedness leading the detectives in 2019 to turn the DNA over to Parabon Labs in Reston. They launched a genealogical search and developed this picture of what the young killer might have looked like. A few weeks ago, a suspect emerged from the DNA sleuthing, a New York man, Stephen Smirk. Just look at how the DNA developed photo compares to his high school yearbook and old DMV picture. The next step, the two lead detectives went to Niska Una, New York, to look for Steven Smirk. They got a big surprise when they arrived at his home. He walked out with the trash. They began to talk to him, and he agreed to give them a DNA sample. The detectives headed back to their hotel room, but the phone rang. It was Smirk saying he wanted to talk. They met him at the local police station. He fully described uh, his, uh, his involvement. He talked about killing Robin. It was a full confession. Smirk was arrested, charged with second-degree murder. Chief Kevin Davis says Smirk was active-duty military living at Fort Myer back in 1994. Police say he had no relationship with Robin Lawrence. They won't comment on a possible motive. The victim's now-grown daughter, Nicole, and other family members joining police for today's announcement, her cousin speaking briefly. We, as the family, would like to thank the Fairfax and Niskayuna Police Departments for their work on this case. We look forward to learning more about the process and next steps. So thank you. That sketch is amazing. And that sketch was not drawn by an artist. It was generated by genetic research genealogy. Uh, it, it's an amazing tool. We've solved several cases in the past couple of years based on familial matches. We collected a really good DNA sample back in 1994. So we had a, a DNA profile that literally sat in a national database. And almost 30 years later, a relative of Stephen Smirk was hit upon. It's amazing. There's, a, there's many extraordinary things about this case. He's been married for many years, and he has two high school age children, and seemingly lives uh, an ordinary life as an IT professional. Uh, has never encountered law enforcement, has never been arrested. Uh, that's a bit unusual. He's 51 years old. And all I can imagine is he's been living with what he did since 1994, and he fully confessed to our detectives in great detail. I mean, we think of this case, we think of uh, the Gilgo Beach murders this summer where police used DNA evidence and then just some very good detective work revisiting those cold cases. 
Uh, are we going to see a host of cases like this coming from all over the country? I, I think, Brianna, we're already seeing it. And, and right now, I'm thinking about renaming cold case to simply unsolved murders because they're waiting to be solved. And with genetic uh, genealogy research and analysis and the familial matches that we're making left and right in our profession, it allows us to get to uh, closer and closer to persons who do or can commit the ultimate crime of murder. Our victims can't speak for themselves, so we have to do that work on their behalf. And they still have family members, uh, you know, who want answers. It's Absolutely. so, so important. Chief, thanks so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Brianna. Those of us who follow decades-old unsolved homicide cases, we don't get good news very often. So it's very good news that the killer consented to giving his DNA and most importantly, gave a full confession to Robin's murder. Very thankful for the Lawrence family. Her daughter, who was two years old and in the next room when her mother was brutally murdered in 1994, is now a 32-year-old woman, and she attended the press conference in September of 2023 when police announced the arrest of the man who had killed her mother. Here's a photo of Robin's parents, Jesse and Robert, holding a picture of their beloved daughter. This picture was from 1996, two years after Robin's brutal murder. I hope they are still with us to see this day. So this DNA composite sketch helped police catch Stephen Smirk as Robin Lawrence's murderer. So look out, all you hiding serial killers. Your DNA is going to haunt you. It's going to help police track you down. You're going to get caught, and I love it. So this killer, Smirk, turns out had no relationship with Robin, didn't know her, never had interacted with her, had nothing against her. Now, police wouldn't comment on what his motive was to brutally murder Robin. I am going to guess that it was a sexual motivation, as that is what I believe to be the primary motivation when a man kills a woman he has no relationship to, doesn't know her, never met her before, and just decides to break into her house and stab her a whole bunch of times with her two-year-old baby girl in the next room. Another quote unquote, good guy killer, right? Guy next door, looks like just a nice guy. Smirk is a IT professional. He works with computers. He's married. He's got two kids in, that are in high school. Smirk had no interactions with law enforcement. At least he had never been arrested for any other crime in all these decades. However, somebody who could do what Stephen Smirk did to Robin Lawrence. Seasoned Virginia police officers who've worked for decades said this was the most brutal crime scene they have ever seen. The most bloody, the most horrific, and a particularly when you include the victim Robin's two-year-old daughter being in the next room at the time of this brutal murder. So my question is, a killer who could do such a random, brazen, vicious murder on a total stranger. Am I supposed to believe this is the first and only time this guy has ever done something like this in his entire life? So I think that we are now in the era of heightened DNA technology, and it's only going to get better. So think of all the victims that can now be identified, people who for decades are called Jane Doe, John Doe. Any murder investigation being solved starts with determining, well, who is our victim? Great to identify victims, great to identify killers, and it just feels like there's an uptick lately in the last few years. It all started, in my mind, with the Golden State Killer case in California. That's the first case that I'm aware of where the killer was tracked down through genetic genealogy. It was in 2018. The killer had gotten away with his murders for decades. The killer had, been, had gotten away with one of the biggest crime sprees in American history for decades because Joseph D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer, 
who was identified through genetic genealogy in 2018. He was first the Vassilia ransacker. Then he evolved, if you want to call it that, to becoming the East Area rapist. And finally, he evolved to murder when he murdered a bunch of people and he is known as the Golden State Killer. So that's the first murderer that I'm aware of, at least in a well-known case, who was tracked down through genetic genealogy, which is amazing. Game changer for society. Then there were several other cases. The most notable recent one would be the Gilgo Beach serial killer case, which identified victims in that case. The very first Gilgo Beach victim, Karen Vergata, killed in 1996, was not identified until 2023 using genetic genealogy. Valerie Mack, the second known Gilgo Beach victim, killed in the year 2000. Valerie was not identified until 20 years later. So, of course, police initially considered Ali a suspect, even though he was in the Bahamas at the time Robin was killed and he could prove it. He was U.S. Air's Vice President for Human Resources at the time. Ollie said, quote, I was always disappointed in the detectives because they seemed to spend an inordinate amount of time on me as a suspect. I recognize and respect the fact that they needed to rule me out. But I was out of the country and could prove it, Lawrence told newspapers. It didn't impact me much because I knew I didn't do it but I was seriously concerned they were focusing on the wrong person in the case. Ollie Lawrence remarried 12 years ago and is now retired in the south of France. Ollie Lawrence also said that news of the arrest of Robin's killer, quote, does resurrect the loss and grief. So I can totally understand where these families are coming from. Yes, it's a great day that Robin's killer was caught. The family gets justice, the family gets answers, the family gets their loved one validated, but it's a bittersweet day. You know, it must be difficult for them to, you know, have all these wounds open back up again. So genetic genealogy is now a major law enforcement tool. Again, it solved the Golden State Killer case. It solved the Idaho 4 student murders case. The Colonial Parkway murders in Virginia. A serial killer was free for decades after terrorizing Virginia, after murdering several people and he was identified in 2024 using genetic genealogy unfortunately the killer had already died the grand rapid serial killer case 17 murder victims and the killer in 2024 was tracked down using genetic genealogy. That killer also confessed to his murders and even confessed to several murders he wasn't even charged with. And there's a long list of other cases in just the past few years also solved through genetic genealogy. Long list of victims identified just in the last few years all using genetic genealogy. So. This is a great day. The advancements are only going to get better. Right now, I think we are at the dawn of a new era. There was a time in America when the, they called it the golden age for serial killers. I hate using that term because it talks about serial killing in a positive way, but that's the term that some people use. I think it was from like the 1970s to the late 1990s or something like that. What I think we're in now is the golden age for catching serial killers. Watch out all you hiding serial killers out there who thought you got away with it. So as always, my heart and support go out to the victims in these cases. The Lawrence family, Robin's grown adult daughter, now gets some justice, some answers. Robin's husband, Ollie, after all these years, must be incredibly traumatizing, heartbreaking for him, their daughter, their entire family to have lived with this ordeal for all these decades. Robin's life mattered. Police never gave up. 
I mean, those are all amazing things. And yep, it took a long time. It took decades, but they finally got the answers and justice that they deserve. And I hope this helps all of their lives moving forward. So guys, thank you so much for supporting my YouTube channel. The support has been amazing. It's great connecting with so many people who care about these cases and want answers and justice for the victims and their families. And so as always, guys, feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment. I love hearing your feedback on these cases. Hope everyone's doing well. Talk with you soon.